Hey, hey, monkeys, how you doing? Damien Keys here. So we are on a journey, Morgan and I, and we are taking you with us. And don't worry, because this time I will be keeping my hands firmly on the steering wheel after the uproar of my last video in the car where everyone was talking about me with my hands waving around. I'll keep my hands on the steering wheel, try not to kill anyone. Don't worry, it's a safe pair of hands. Today, we are going to be talking about the top 10 things that they don't tell you at music college. As someone who has built music universities and been a part of music education establishment for over 18, 19 years, I know a thing or two about music, music education and I know that while they're teaching you styles and techniques and, and, and live performance and theory and sight reading, that's all fantastic. But what about the stuff that you need to know when you leave that music course and go out into the big wide world? Well, this video is here to help you. So come with me on a journey as we go through the top 10 things they don't teach you at music college. Tip number one, there are so few jobs in the music industry as a musician, trying to get work as a musician. It's very, very tough, but there are thousands and thousands of music industry or music education graduates every single year around the world. Now do the maths, the supply and demand, they don't add up. The amount of people that are graduating as musicians compared to how many jobs there are as a musician in the world. There's just not many of them. So this is a fight. Make no bones about it. This is a major fight. You are going up against people who have been doing this for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. You're going up against me when it comes to being a bass player. And I have to tell you, I'm fucking amazing. So therefore, you need to utilize your time at music college, which means every hour counts. You need to be utilizing that time for those two, three, four years that you're at music college. You need to be picking the brains of your tutors as much as you can. This is a chance to learn and to play and to experiment, but you, you need to use this time because when it finishes and when you start in the big world, the time goes fast and all of a sudden the responsibility hits home fast. Tip number two, if you don't know what you want from the music industry or what you want out of your career in the music industry, you need to figure this shit out fast. It's all very well going to music college so you can learn and you can find yourself, but at the end of the day, you've got three years for your degree, probably, and at the end of that, you're in it. So if you don't know what you want, now is the time to pick something and go for it. And you can change your mind later. But this namby-pamby attitude of just seeing what happens, I promise you I can tell you what happens. Nothing. Tip number three, competition is real. And just because you've got a degree, it doesn't mean you're a monster player and you've got to compete as a monster player. So right now, experience is your friend and you need to utilize the power of free. And by that, I mean, if you don't have a gig and no one's prepared to pay you, you still need to have a gig. If you're not gigging this weekend, there's something wrong. So you need to be out gigging. And if that means you're gigging for free, so be it. And I don't buy into this thing of like, if you're not paying me, then I'm not doing it because I'm worth more. You're worth more when when the supply and demand says you're worth more. And right now, this bullshit about you wouldn't expect a plumber to do that for exposure, no. But you would expect a plumber to go and do an apprenticeship and get experience before he sticks his hand on the bog and starts picking up shit. So from your point of view, the power of free is your best friend. If you are not gigging this weekend, then something is wrong. Make that change and make sure you've got plenty of gigs in your diary. Tip number four, music is subjective. Yeah, brilliant, but playing in time, playing in tune, and also the right gear, that's not subjective. That is a given that you need to have, and there's only one way to do this, and that is practice. You need to put the hours in to be good enough to compete on a level with the industry that is at the moment. No one's gonna move aside and just say, come on in. They're not. They're gonna want, they're gonna think you're gonna be taking their place because you will be taking their place when it comes to work. So therefore, again, the fight is real. You have to be good enough, and the only way you can do this is by practicing the right things for the right amount of time. So therefore, if you want to compete, you better get practicing. Tip number five, the music industry is now all on you. You don't need to know what's in a record contract. You don't need to know what's in a publishing contract. That's what lawyers are for. What you need to know is how to grow an audience and how to promote yourself, because that is lesson one, two, three, four, and five. Tip number six, took my hands off the wheel. 
Learn to drive. Do you know what? The number one piece of advice I give when someone asks me about having a career as a musician, a long-term career, is learn to drive. If you can't drive, you are not in control. And at the moment, look, I'm driving, I'm free. I can stick my bass and my bass amp in the back of this car and I can go and audition, I can go and do gigs. I am in control. I don't have to phone a mate up and say, can you drop me off somewhere? Or phone my mum or, 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 or find some public transport where I've got to carry an amp, a pedal board, two guitars and everything else on my back. It's not feasible. You have to be able to drive. And anyone who's watching this saying, well, I don't drive, well, that doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean you couldn't get more work. Anyone who's got a decent career and doesn't drive is either luck or could have had a better career if they could actually drive. You need to drive. Stop making excuses and going, you don't need to drive. You need to learn to fucking drive. Learn to drive. Tip number seven, fail hard and fail fast. If you're doing a music degree, you've probably got three years, maybe longer, that you can experiment and you can fail and it's okay. And too many music colleges wrap you up in cotton wool because of retention and achievement, which basically means they need you to stay on the course so that they get a bunch of money. Harsh, but true. In which case, it's too easy to wrap students in cotton wool and say, it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. Well, I can tell you what, it's only going to be okay if you make it okay because I can promise you I have taught thousands and thousands of students and it pisses me off when I go into a bakery and someone starts going demo and they were a great guitarist or a great singer or a great drummer. That is not good enough. So when people say it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay because you make it okay. Is if you don't make it okay, you will be out there as well, just getting a normal job and this dream that you've got will be gone. Harsh lesson, but now's the time to fail. You have got time. That's one of the best things you've got about music college is you can learn and in order to learn, you fail. And if you're failing, then you're learning from failing. And I get it. Nobody wants to fail, but think of it like a boxer. You start boxing lessons. They teach you how to jab. They teach you how to right hook. They teach you how to move. But at the same point, then you get in a ring and someone throws a punch right in your face. That is enough to throw you. It's the same thing with the music industry. Learning it's one thing, but you need these punches in the face because this is the thing that teaches you and tells you what's real life and the music industry is hard it's really fucking hard and it is competitive as hell so you need to know these lessons so now's the time to fail tip number eight you are now a multi-instrumentalist if you were not a multi-instrumentalist two minutes ago you are from here on in and the reason for that is because the music industry has changed there's not as much money in touring there's not as much money out there so if you're gonna have a long-term career 20 30 40 years you can't just be stubborn and do the one thing if you are a guitarist you are now a lead singer as well. And I know you're, list you're listening to this going, I'm not lead singer. Well, you are, because sometimes you just have to sing some lead and sometimes you just have to sing some BVs. So get used to it and you can learn. And anyone tells you you can't learn is lying unless you're that tone deaf. If you're a bass player, you should be playing some synth because there's so much synth in modern pop. If you're a drummer, you should also be doing BVs. If you're a backing vocalist, you should be learning bass and you should be learning guitar. If you're a, a, a guitarist, you should be learning bass. And if you're a bass player, you should be learning guitar. Because these are the things that make you indispensable on a tour because nobody wants to take extra people on a tour because it's expensive and we can't afford to do that so nowadays if we can give you a keyboard and get you to play a few lines then all of a sudden I've saved money and you become the hero of the day so from here on in if you're a guitarist what else have you got for me what is the thing that's gonna make you completely irreplaceable in the band or the project that we're doing. And if you're watching this and you only play one instrument and you only specialize in one instrument, that's cool. Learn, you're young, you've got plenty of time. Do you know what, 10 years ago, I was a bass player. I couldn't play any other instrument, but at the same point, I was fed up with dealing with singers who had massive egos, and I was like, fuck it, I'll do it myself. It took me a few years, but I got better. And now, should I want to front a gig as a singer? No problem at all. I've done like a thousand gigs as a singing bass player. Easy peasy. It just took time. I was patient, and I recognized that I couldn't just go through my entire career just playing bass without having massive gaps, and I didn't want to do that. Tip number nine, you are not just a musician. You are now an entrepreneur. You are a business business owner and you are the business and marketing and social media and online advertising these are not bonuses these are necessities these are things that you now need to know about and it goes hand in hand with your songwriting and with your technical ability it's part of the deal so you need to learn this shit as well as spending the time on your playing and I'm not saying this out of choice it's just the way it is this is the way the industry is you've got to be able to promote yourself so you need to learn this shit 
And tip number 10, if you haven't got your own social media platform where you are making videos and making content of yourself playing as a musician, you do not exist. It's as simple as that. You can go out and do as many gigs as you want, but people will see you and go, how do I get hold of you? What are you going to do? Give them a business card like it's 1999. What are you going to do? Tell them to remember your name. Yes, you can put your number in their phone, but the first place people go from a consumption point of view when they need a new musician is social media. And when they're trying to find people, where do they get stuff? Social media. So if you haven't got a Facebook, an Instagram, and a YouTube where you are actually making content of yourself playing and putting it out there, then effectively you don't have a digital footprint. You don't exist. So if you do have social media platforms, then start upping the rate of content. Start getting more stuff out there. Do more playing, learn more songs, video yourself playing, and get that stuff out there. But if you don't have that, then you need it today. You need to, to finish this video, and that's the first thing I would do. I'd go and start up facebook.com forward slash Damien Keys and youtube.com forward slash Damien Keys because those are the things that are gonna start getting you work long term. So that's my top 10 things that they don't tell you at Music College. Now, I want you to know that I am not anti-music music education. In fact, I'm working a lot with the Music College Water Bear because I'm so excited about what they're doing and how it's kind of a new evolution for music education because I do think there's a lot of music education in this country which is just outdated and with YouTube it's not needed and, and, and the point of having a degree is not enough. You need one-to-one -one time and if there's like thousands of musicians on a course, how are you going to get that, that special treatment that you deserve when you're going through through your education. You're just being taught at and it's not good enough in today's age. So I'm not anti-music education at all. But I also want to be realistic about this. Just because you, you've got a degree, I want you to know that means fuck all. Unless you're going to do something with your playing, your strategy and actually the work ethic to get yourself out there. So I hope that helped. Any questions, any comments, leave them below. Come and hit me up in the DMs. Come and be a part of this community because we're doing this every single day. Share this with your mates who are at Music College so they can get the most out of it as well. Otherwise, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll put my hands on the wheel and start concentrating. Thanks very much. See you tomorrow.